Set aside an hour or two a week, just the two of you. No gadgets, a little bit of quality time together, one-on-one -on -one time, where you're eyeball to eyeball with each other. No interference, no phones, no devices or gadgets of any kind, no television. Have a date. Have a date with each other. You'll be surprised how much difference it makes in your relationship and how it strengthens your relationship because then you're putting priority on each other. My wife and I met uh, via computer dating service back in 1971. My wife had been in it for a while and she had already had several dates, but none of them worked out, thank the Lord. So I called her, she pretended to be sick. So we finally met when that so-called sickness had passed. She worked days uh, at a hospital, a local hospital. I worked nights. I was still in the Navy and I worked the night shift. We dated for three months until her birthday, which was March 22nd of 1971. I finally uh, gave her the engagement ring and uh, we were able to set our wedding date for May the 2nd, and that was uh, May 2nd of 1971. And then the next year, our dear son was born, April the 24th of 1972, because her mom and dad wanted grandchildren and they wanted them quick. We had our struggles, our ups and downs, just like any couple, and I, Unfortunately, I brought a lot of baggage, bad baggage from my early childhood. I really pretty much missed my childhood because I wasn't able to uh, get out, you know, and really socialize with, the, with the, my schoolmates because we worked seven days a week and uh, my daddy and mama didn't believe in celebrating anything, so there was no celebrations of any kind. And I mistreated my wife, and I mistreated our son David really, really badly, particularly early on. She was a Southern Baptist girl and was very strong in, in the church, the church where we got married. So it wasn't too long after that that I gave my heart to the Lord, and I began to uh, learn of what this Christianity and, and living a Christian life was all about. I was very bossy, very domineering, always in control, and it just really made life miserable. I made life miserable for, uh, for her and David. And for that, I'm very, very apologetic. Uh, because I didn't know any better. The only role model I had was what I had at home with my parents, and that wasn't good, a good role model for anybody. So I pretty much uh, had to learn it on my own as I went. It was kind of like uh, learn as you go. And bless the Lord, I did begin to uh, learn more about what the scripture says about marriage and what a husband should be. And then I began to turn things around with the Lord's help and began to improve in my behavior, which was horrible uh, toward them. And uh, we began to enjoy doing things together. We had very similar likes and dislikes, so that made it, made it somewhat easier. And uh, we, we were just, just happy, the, the three of us. And uh, we attempted to, to uh, have another child, to have a second child. We really wanted two, 
but it wasn't to be. Uh, she miscarried, and the doctors told her that because of her condition, she was very fortunate to be able to carry one. And God here again was merciful to us. He gave us the total package in David, and we were just so thrilled uh, with him and turned all of our attention towards him. And uh, I mistreated him too, unfortunately, and she came to his rescue again and again and again. And uh, so I um, didn't really turn things around for them until I got filled with the Holy Spirit, got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And then the Lord began to teach me what marriage was supposed to be and how a man, how the husband was supposed to treat his wife and give to her as Christ, love her as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. So then I began to be more giving, more loving, more uh, affectionate towards her. And she began to respond. And uh, so our latter years of marriage uh, was indeed much better than our former years, thanks to the Lord and His supernatural intervention in my life to uh, teach me how to love her. And uh, she had a very low self-esteem, so when she got filled with the Spirit, then she got much bolder. And that kind of came as a shock to me, and it took me a little while to kind of get over that new walk uh, with the Lord that she had. Because up until, up until that time, she had just pretty much been you know, submissive and almost like a doormat. Uh, but now she was tasting a different life. She was tasting freedom and, and liberty and being liber liberated as a wife. And uh, so that newfound freedom brought some challenges on my part. Unfortunately, uh, she, uh, she was born with cerebral palsy, a birth defect, and walked with a limp all of her life. And about five years ago now, she was stricken with, we still not, never did really find out exactly what caused it or what, what took place, but she woke up one morning and wasn't able to get out of bed. So I tried to help her out of bed and we, I couldn't hold her up, she couldn't stand. She was unable to stand and she fell to the floor and I had to call paramedics to come and rescue her and take her to the hospital. She started out uh, when we first got married, she was able to walk without assistance, was able to walk but with a limp. And then she went from that a few years later and had to hold on to me and we would walk uh, arm in arm together. And then a few years after that, it deteriorated even more and she had to go walk with a walker. And she walked with a walker right up until the time that she was stricken and uh, confined to a hospital bed here at home where she uh, had care here until the day that she went to be with the Lord, which was November the 2nd of 2021. And we, I'll admit it was, it was rough. It took every ounce of strength I had because I was still working. I hadn't retired at the time. So it was a real challenge, but God met that challenge by giving me the strength. And uh, I've got to say this year, 2022, has actually been the best year, spiritually speaking, of my life. Uh, because the Lord is restoring so much to me this year that 
was lost early on in childhood. And it's like he's bending over backwards to make life so much better for me. He's intervened on my behalf time after time after time this year. And I've wept more this year than I have in my entire life. It's, it's tears of joy as I think about the goodness of the Lord and what he's done for us and how he restored our marriage. Uh, at one point, my wife actually, and I deserved it, I deserved it. I deserved to be killed. She actually wanted to put a contract out on me to have me killed. She couldn't come to do it herself, but I was so mean to her and did her so wrong, I deserved it. But bless the Lord, he pulled me through that as well. And uh, so I was able to, to overcome that and get beyond that and be restored and uh, celebrate our 50th wedding anniversary because she passed six months to the day after we celebrated our 50th wedding anniversary. So I wanted to try to say something to someone sharing of my own experience that hopefully if I can just help so anyone, if I can help even one person, even one married couple, or one contemplating marriage, I wouldn't want to end this without making sure that I tell everybody about Jesus Christ. Husbands, love your wives. As Christ loved the church and gave himself for the church and start loving the Lord and let him love on you. There is no love like the love of Jesus that gave himself fully and completely for us to make sure that we are taken care of spiritually, financially. He's our provider. Um, Relationship-wise, he's the one that keeps us together, that keeps us in right relationships with one another. And mentally, he gives us a sound mind. He promises that once we come to him, we actually have his mind. We have the mind of Christ. And we know that his mind is not diminished in any way but he is, operates at full capacity. So I urge you to be ready such time as he returns that we can all go home to be with him and enjoy an eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Redeemer and our soon coming King.